So do you remember that video I made a while back where we took, uh, basically we took a fan showdown fan and we printed it three times, once in PLA, twice in ABS, to see how it performed when it was smooth, like the surface was smooth. Because there's a lot of questions about does the layer lines on a 3D printed fan hurt performance? And for the most part, in that test, we found that it performed about the same, but it was a little bit quieter. But even before making that video, I've always been kind of fascinated with the whole smoothing process of prints, taking something that's obviously 3D printed where you can see all the different layer lines and then giving it a nice smooth, you know, shiny surface finish. I just think it looks a lot better. Problem is with acetone smoothing, you gotta use ABS and ABS can be a pain in the ass to print with. Uh, it smells when compared to PLA. It likes to warp if you just think about like anything cold, if you just think ice cube, this falls off the bill plate, stuff like that. Now it, it's a little better if you use it in an enclosure, but uh, it could be a little bit tricky. I have printed it on my Prusa. It's not like impossible to do, but it's not as easy as PLA. But I recently found out that there is this filament that does exist in the world that was specifically designed to be smoothed. And that's what we're gonna take a look at today. And it's made by Polymaker. Now originally, Polymaker reached out and asked if I was interested in trying out some of their new Polyterra PLA. Uh, this is essentially a PLA that's a bioplastic that was designed to be sustainable for the, uh, the environment. It's got this nice cardboard spool holder. It's a bioplastic and it was also designed to be easy to print. And for the most part, while using this, I thought it worked just like PLA. If you actually go back to season two, episode seven of the Fan Showdown, this is the exact filament that we use. It's a Polyterra PLA. It's got, it's a, the color is called mint and it worked well. The prints turned out good. The support came off easy and the fans performed just as well as they would if they were just used regular PLA. But while looking at this filament, uh, I came across another one they sell called Poly Smooth. And this is the stuff that intrigued, intrigued me. This stuff is specifically designed to be post-processed after the printing process. It's a lot of processes. To give that nice shiny finish that I they do love a lot. So essentially you get the same surface finish that you do when you acetone smooth ABS, but you don't get to deal with all the annoying aspects of ABS, like the smell, the warping, all the good stuff. And for the last week now, I've been printing different models with this to kind of give it a shot. And for the most part, I would agree, I didn't notice any goofy characteristics, it didn't smell. The only thing I did notice when I originally started testing it with uh, my PLA setup, uh, this stuff does not like to stick to the build plate. I use the FL Sun SR to do all these prints and right out of the gate, fell off. Uh, I had to use a little bit of a glue stick, up the bed temperature to 70 degrees and from that point forward, no problems. Other than that, I did increase the hot end temperature just slightly. I normally print my PLA around 200, 205. Uh, for this stuff, I kicked it up to about 210 and it worked a little better. So for the smoothing part, for ABS, you use acetone. For polysmooth, you use isopropyl alcohol and they recommend to get the best results to use this piece of equipment that they also sell called the PolySure. Now what this thing does is you put your model in there and it seals it in, this little enclosure, and there's a nebulizer in the back that takes IPA that we got right here, and it creates a fine mist that goes inside here. And the model spins around there, evenly coating the entire surface and eventually smoothing it out to a nice glossy sheen. I've only tried it once to see how the machine worked on a print that failed and it seemed to work. So I'm really excited to try it on an actual print to see what it does turn out to look like. And I know you're also thinking this because I was, this thing could probably also work with uh, acetone for ABS and no, a lot of the parts on this are actually made of ABS, so that's a bad idea. So here are all the models that we're going to try to smooth to see how they turn out. One, of course, the Benchy. We gotta try the Benchy. And then I want to try one of these print and place models to see if the smoothing process seizes the whole deal up. So right now it's just normal. Everything flops like it should. Uh, we'll smooth it out and see if it stays all flappy. Then I got a nice little vase. The reason I wanted to try a vase is that if you print with FDM printers often, you'll know that they are not watertight. And if you put water in this, it would just, just leak out. So if we smooth it, I want to know, does it, be, does, it make it, does it make it waterproof or watertight? Because that might have implications for future projects. And I'm just looking down this thing right now and there's, <laughs> there's more holes in this and there's probably plastic. So it's not looking good. And then lastly, I printed this nice big bust of Deadpool. And the reason I want to try this one is that it's 
pretty much at the limit to what this machine can can hold. Uh, also, it printed very well without support, and it has a lot of detail that I want to see if it's maintained after the smoothing process. So how this thing works is you turn it on like it already is. You hit open. You wait. Ah, it could be a little faster. I won't lie. Uh, on the top here, you got this little removal build plate where your model goes. Set that in there like so. This plastic cover can be removed pretty easily. And what you got to use is this little turkey baster that they send with the, the unit. And there's a little tank in there. You fill it up with IPA. Uh, after you put your model on it, like this little benchy, we'll set our timer with this dial. And the dial shows a bunch of little squares above it. Each square represents about five minutes. And per the manual, they recommend about 20 to 40 minutes. And that's kind of based on your model size. So for like the benchy, we'll start with like 20 minutes, see what happens for Deadpool here. If he fits in there, we'll probably go like 40, then maybe longer. Uh, in the top here, you do have some LED lights that are controlled from here. The nebulizer is in the back and you got a little RGB light that they added back there just so you can see the mist. It looks, it looks super cool, at least I think. So let's fill the tank and see what happens. So we got them all done. This one was a little tight, but we got them to fit in there. But let's, let's start with the old Benchy, because that's what we did first, and everybody's pretty familiar with a, with a Benchy. And for the most part, it, it turned out pretty good. Everything is smooth. I mean, you can kind of see layer lines up close, but you do have that nice gloss, glossy look. We didn't lose too much of the detail on the smokestack. And in my defense, this was my first go at using this machine, and I could have probably left it in longer, but it's very, it's very tricky. Um, if you've ever smoothed ABS, you know, if you don't leave it in long enough, it just looks like a 3D print that's a little glossy, too long and it just melts away. So this was not too bad for the first attempt. The octopus turned out much, much better, I think. Uh, the, the, the head is very smooth. It's got that glossy look to it, but because it's a print and place model, you can see that the legs no longer, they no longer, move like they used to. They, they still can, and I guess if you went through and manipulated every single one of them, you could probably break it free. What, what happens is, is that where they touch, and where they touch when it's being smooth, it kind of just starts to dissolve, and they kind of weld themselves together. If you can look at this PLA one, you see how they move. Uh, this guy can pretty much stand up on his tentacles now, so if you want to smooth out uh, a print in place, just be aware that you don't want to overcook it, and then after you get it out and it dries, you want to manipulate everything to kind of get everything broken up. I could probably use an X-Acto knife too, but in the end, not too bad. The vase, or vase, I actually think this one looks the best out of the three. This was my third attempt, so I was kind of getting used to it at this point. And I think this one turned out really well. Now, it's still not waterproof, but I don't believe that's because the smoothing couldn't have sealed it up. I think it's the model itself, because if I look down it, Everywhere that these points come together, I can see a hole there and it's just too big for it to fill. But I think if it was a nice, even print and there was very, very tiny gaps and you smoothed it out, I do think it would, uh, you'd have a better chance of sealing it up. Also, I did notice, I used to have, oh, this is a really, this is a really big 
vase that I did on the SR. And if you ever printed vases or vases or whatever, uh, you'll notice that when you print them, it's just one layer thick. So if you squeeze it, you can pretty much destroy it very easily. The layers just kind of break apart. But since it's been smoothed, everything is a lot, it's like, it's like almost like a rubber now. It's kind of cool. It's much more durable, I think, than when it's just a 3D printed one. So that might be a benefit too. Now Deadpool here, this, this is about the limit of this machine. To get it to fit, I had to put it in there, one, without the, the platform, so the little stand that it comes on, which was good because it fit, but bad in that after it did smooth out, it was pretty much welded to the platform and I had to, well, one, the elevator couldn't come up and then after I got up a little bit, I had to open this up and try to pry it out there without breaking anything. Luckily, I got it off, but yeah, if it's, I wouldn't recommend using this thing without the platform. These little teeth that it's on here are there for a reason. They help, you know, keep it elevated and therefore it doesn't get stuck to it. And even with the platform out, this guy was very close to the top here where the lights are. And you'll notice that on the bottom, or like on the base, it's overcooked. I mean, there, it, it was in there way too long. All the detail is almost just melted away. And then on top of his head where it was almost touching the surface, you can still see the layer lines. In the middle though, it doesn't look too bad, but definitely, you want to you want to stay within the uh, the size constraints of this machine if you're going to use it, and I don't think you actually have to. This this thing's awesome. Don't get me wrong; it made the process way easier than when I did the ABS smoothing with a vapor and like a sealed container that I couldn't see into. I had to just keep opening and closing it and make sure I kept refilling all the, the acetone as it evaporated away. This thing, you just fill up the tank, turn it on, and just watch it. If you're new like me, just watch it until you can see it's to the smoothness level that you want to be at. And then once you get used to it, you can probably just set it and forget it. But yeah, I think it's, for the most part, pretty awesome. And it, overall, if I compare my limited experience doing ABS smoothing and smoothing with this, this is a lot easier. It's a lot easier to print. It doesn't smell like crap. It doesn't warp like crazy. It, it just all around an easier product, which makes sense. This is specifically designed to be easy to print and to smooth. And I think the, uh, the look is very, very appealing. It takes some, takes some getting used to, to fine tune the time limit you want to leave it in there but with a little bit of practice i'm sure you'd be great at it if you're interested in any of this this uh, pla the polyterra pla uh this poly smooth this machine itself the old sr that i printed this stuff on i'll leave links in the description below but in if you have, also if you have any ideas what we should do with smoothing if you have any specific projects in mind let me know we'll we'll give it a shot also i did notice i didn't even think about this till now i printed this with a very thin wall and you can see the gyroid um, infill through the sidewall, especially now that it's smooth and it's got a nice gloss, you can see all the lines. So if I guess if I was going to do this again, I would definitely print it with a thicker wall just so you couldn't see that infill. And lastly, you might be thinking with all that IPA vapor, it smells bad, but surprisingly this thing is sealed pretty well and I couldn't smell pretty much any IPA while it was in process and I was pretty blown away by that. But yeah, I like it. Till next time.